welcome to Love at First Laugh, the Green Room Edition. I'm Grace Fraga, your host, and today I have a great Latina guest. Uh, I'm Latina. I am so proud uh, of this woman. She has accomplished so much. She's a very successful comedian, hilarious, a wonderful human being. She has three comedy specials, okay, on Showtime, HBO Max. I mean, come on. This is going to be a great show. And please welcome the amazing Monique Marves. Oh and God. I know that you're there. You are. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were gonna laugh. Like all great Latinas, I'm running ten minutes late, right? I love it. I literally <laughs> got in a hairdresser for you, Grace. I wanted to look pretty, and here I am putting on mascara at the last minute and getting my last. That's. I mean, it's ridiculous, right? Way, I have three Showtime specials and an HBO, so it's four all together. But oh, girl, okay, I wow! Because I've been doing this thirty years, so that's only one special per seven and a half years. Okay, it averages out. That is amazing, you girl. You're the bomb. You're amazing, oh. and we work together on the <laughs> Hello well, Comedy I'm sorry, Festival. I love it. Time it's over. <laughs> But no, no, this is called the green room edition. And how how much more perfect is this? Oh, green room. Yeah, this is the green room edition. So this is perfect. You're doing your hair. I know. Thank you. This is the way it should I be. I wanted to look so pretty for you. Thank you. You look pretty no matter what. Okay. Thank you. You are you're gorgeous. You are amazing. We're gonna talk about all that. I have so many questions for you. Shoot. Um, I love impromptu. <laughs> I love that I don't even know what you're gonna ask me. As I personal love it. as you want, I don't care. I know you're so open and I love that. You're like, whatever. We're you know, most comics, we're like so we don't give a shit. You know, it's oh like we'll tell you everything. I don't give a rodent's rectum. <laughs> <laughs> you That's ask, great. I tell. <laughs> That's great. I love it. So, well, the first question I always ask is, what propelled you to do stand-up comedy? Uh, nothing. I didn't want to do it. It's a, it's a stupid job if you want to get laid regularly. Men are very intimidated <laughs> by it. And um, I've wrecked two marriages, two live-ins, and a couple of hang and bangs. But what are you going to do? So, oh. <laughs> so, but here's the upshot. You don't pick comedy. Comedy picks you. It's yeah. in your blood. It's a thing that chases you. It's worse than your mom. And that's saying a lot for Latinos. It just stays on your ass. It's like, mija, get on stage. Mija, get on stage. So I yeah, this is my 30th year. And, and here's the story. And you won't even know it because you're too young. There used to be a guy named Sam Kinison. And when I was in Miami, there used to be the Miami Herald, like an actual newspaper, right? And yeah. on the second page was the people section. And in May of 1990, Sam Kinison played the Miami Arena where the Miami Heat plays. Imagine selling the Miami Arena. And they had a picture of him in the people section coming out with these two blondes with big boobs and big hair. And I thought, forgive me, but I know it's a podcast. I said, if that big, ugly, fat bastard is getting rich and laid, I'm going to try this comedy thing because this is ridiculous. It was just that simple because my whole life, I'm not even funny i just tell the truth and wrap it in bacon so people will eat it so people are like oh my god you need to be a comedian you need to be a comedian like, that's a dumb job you know but but after i saw sam kinison i said there might be something to this well you hit on something that's so real if it's you tell the truth and i think to be a really good comedian you have to come from the truth oh it's i tell people there's only two decisions you're going to make as a comic as an artist Number yeah. one, when to open the kimono. Number two, when to let it drop. If you're not willing to be naked, don't even get in this business. You're wasting everybody's time. Bravo. I love it. I love the way you say it. Yes, absolutely. And you're going to be naked. And the thing is, then it's it's a problem, like you were saying, when you're dating, because then you're naked. And then they misinterpret you or they, they just are intimidated by you because you drop that. Uh, no, I've had little dudes it. come up to me after the show and they hit on me and they're like, let's party, comedy lady. I'm like, no, thank you. And then they say, well, come on, you've been married three times. It's not like you're a virgin. You know, and they're like, and I look at them, I go, look, little dude, 
<laughs> At my hotel room, I have water pressure, a good book, and chocolate. These things I know will make me happy. You, on the other hand, are an unknown. I'm not willing to take a chance. So sorry. You're cute, but I'm not willing. I love it. You just tell it like it is. You don't give a shit. No, I don't. I love that. That is yeah. awesome. That's why you're so As a female comedian, it's too easy mm -hmm. to get wrapped up in the lifestyle because mm -hmm. as women, we're already insecure. Right. So when you're right. on stage, unless you're a, a, a monkey beast, you know, you're on stage. People are drawn to you. People hit on you. Yeah. People talk to you. Yes. You can't let that pull you away from the reason you're doing this. Yes. It's a distraction and yeah. not a good distraction. I mean, it does, if you have low self-esteem, it's going to boost your self-esteem. You know, it's like we get hit on constantly. But it's it's not anything you should pursue. Like, no. I, you can count the, the numbers that I've gone on dates with an audience member with the fingers of one hand, and you can count the time that I've, you know, uh -uh, with an audience <laughs> member, like two, two yes. times in 30 years. That's two. nothing. No. Yeah, three, yeah. technically three, and I married one. Okay, no, fair I enough. No, I can't. And and he didn't. He wasn't an audience member. He worked at the club. So I'm gonna take him back off. Okay. Two okay. times I've slept with audience members. Both times, disaster. Oh, I can only disaster. imagine. I, I can only imagine. And some people, I don't know if this happened to you. They just want it. Like they think if they sleep with you, they're gonna get Nobody funnier. Funny. Yes, they they want to like suck the funny like a vampire. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, like a chupacabra. Un chupacabra, see. Sí. I'm like, oh look, my God. I'm not gonna make you funnier, smarter, or sexier. When I leave this hotel room, I'm still me, and you're still you, and I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry you're you. I'm sorry you're you, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Oh my God, this is so good already. I just, I can't. Uh, so, do you have any rituals? How do you prepare besides doing your hair? I love that you're so good. <laughs> By the way, she's the best hairdresser in the world. Who comes out on a Sunday, right? Oh my God, I know. Color, I know. trim, yeah. That's so, amazing. Yeah, no, I would have been beautiful in 10 minutes, but I, hey, we're here now, right? So yeah, we're here, whatever. But here's the upshot. You know, my ritual, number one, from the beginning, yeah. and we're Latinas, so let's face yeah. it, we overdress. We wear a prom dress to pay our light bill, right? Yes. But, I remember a black comic, African-American, back in the day named Darwin Hines. And he told me, Darwin said, never look like a member of the audience. Oh. He, said, he told me, he said, you always look, because I was an open micer, but I would show up every set I could get, you know? So yeah. over the weekend, when clubs were Wednesday through Sunday, back in the day, like I saw him like Thursday night open mic, Friday I came and did a guest set, son, you know? And he told me, he said, when you walk in the room, people know that you're not in the audience. And, uh -huh. and you know this about me. I always dress up. Yeah. No, you I always dress wear a vintage dress, makeup, full makeup, nice hair, mm -hmm. because I want the audience. I don't want to blend. When I'm st sitting yeah. in the back of the room, people are turning around. I hear them. That's her. That must be her. Wow. I love that. So they know you're the lead. They're like the supporting cast. That's yep. it. And you know what? The good thing about that is that, and I tell young comics that I'm mentoring, attitude is everything. Are you all done? Is that it? Hang on one second. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll tell you. Okay, we're good. So, okay. Thank you so Hi, much. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so I I I tell young people because there's a lot back in the even when I started, like when I was first headlining in the early '90s, because I headlined fast. There were so few women that were. Uh -huh doing things in a different way. Like I didn't come out of the shoot doing the, you know, Paula Poundstone with the jacket, with the leather, you know, keep in mind when I started, the big people were Elaine Boosler, Paula Poundstone. And that was a breed of comic. Mm -hmm. And I was the first of the wave of attractive, like Sarah Silverman used to open for me. Oh, like I was wow. the first of the girls that were girly girls. And right. I took a lot of heat for it. I was in the front lines of the girly girls. Oh, I, I want to talk feminine. I showed the yeah. girls. I, you know, <laughs> yeah. I took a lot of heat for it. And I wow. remember one time a female booker gave me some mm -hmm. crap. And she said, Monique, no, she was cool though. She said, 
your problem, your challenge is that nobody wants to hear ugly things coming out of a pretty mouth. If you were, oh. if you were a big fat black chick in a moo moo, your act would play different. She said, but you look like you've been laid, you're getting laid and you're going to get laid. And that's scary to people. <laughs> and think about now, 30 years later, the power women are owning their power. Like Find I was doing it when nobody was doing it. You know, like women now are like, think of how Amy Schumer walks on stage or, mm -hmm. you know, like we walk on stage now, like I'm a chick, I have an opinion and a vagina and I use them both <laughs> regularly. But yeah. that wasn't popular 30 years ago. You had people that were dressed androgynously, that were mm -hmm. even, even Elaine Boozler, who's, you know, a girly girl or Rita yeah. Rudner, they weren't playing up their femininity in their acts. They just weren't. That is and, so interesting. And I love seeing that now, that you can be a strong mm -hmm. woman with a smart act and still be wearing, you know, expensive shoes. Right. Or be sexy. Super sexy. Absolutely. Now, now, it's, now it's demanded. Now it's almost like you go faster <laughs> if you're hotter. And I, like, I, I don't know. know who this chick is. But I keep mentioning her because I'm hoping someone will know. There's evidently some chick who performs regularly in a bikini at the comedy store. And what? I'm like, yeah. And I heard about her through a mutual friend. They're like, have you heard about this chick? And I'm like, if I would have done that 30 years ago, and I could have. Of course. I would have gotten nowhere. I got news for you. I could do it now. But that's not you the can, point. Oh, yeah. You're like so gorgeous. It's ridiculous. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Even if I had a monster head, I work out. From the neck down, I got it going on. <laughs> but you don't have a butter face, you know. No, but thank you. No, hello. You know, you're gorgeous <laughs> all over. So thank you. And I got news for you. I didn't start out this way. And I tell women that self confidence it's mm -hmm. biblical. You speak it into being. When yes. you're comfortable, like I have a giant drag queen head. I have to wear man hands, like man hats. I have a big head and I have baby fine hair, which is why I have to get it done for everything because if it's not fresh, it's totally flat. And, you know, I had acne as a child. I had glasses, oh. braces. But my point is, if you believe something and you follow that belief, even if you're not physically beautiful, you don't have the face of Charlize Theron, you will emit something, you will glow, you will conjure, you will create. Yeah. And I feel better at 57 years old than I wow. did at 27 when I started. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I feel prettier, sexier, fitter. I am on my game like I've never been. That is so, ins that's amazing. And and I think it's inspiring. I, it doesn't make me feel old. <laughs> no, 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 it's inspiring at any age. I could be 75. I'd be, I'd be inspired by you. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You know, age doesn't. It, yeah, but I didn't say that because of that. Yeah, it's. No, say but, it. I'm proud. No, you're amazing. Shit, that's incredible. Uh, I think also as we get older, women, we get more confident and we realize who gives a fuck. You know, this is what I have to work with. And I'm going to make the best of this, of hey, what I I've work done. out like a fiend. I don't eat meat. My worst, worst thing is Diet Coke is my one, like, bad thing yeah. I do once in a while. And I still have a little hail damage. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Yeah. What are you going to do? You know, yeah. I actually don't, I don't care anymore. I really no. don't. No, no. And you shouldn't. No. Men don't care. Men will screw mud. It's warm and it's wet. I'm going in. I know. I can't even tell you the things men have told me they have screwed. I can't even. Yeah, no, I, I love toilet paper. You know the, the toilet paper thing? That's what they screwed. Well, the joke about men will screw mud, that's a real story that I got from a girl many years ago named, I'm gonna tell you, Denise Malagon. She's not even in the business anymore. Beautiful girl, by the way. And yeah. sweet as honey. She was my opening act until she married a rich guy. And um, anyway, she told me that in Jacksonville there was some lake with uh with like these whole, you know, like suction holes on the side of the you know like mm -hmm. a, and she said that one time i don't know if it was a cousin or that she caught the guys literally if the, the guys figured out if they put their penis in this mud and pulled it out that it felt nice you and, and, and the two of us are like they're literally screwing mud <laughs> like that's going in my act that is terrible she said that you don't mention my name but she's been out of the biz for 25 years so i feel confident it's okay now yeah no that's <laughs> 
That's crazy. So here, Matthew, I love this. Matthew, thank you for commenting. Matthew Moore, Paula Poundstone is beautiful and so are fat yeah, black women. Thank no. you. Thank you. I'm Everybody is no. beautiful. I was being told not to say certain jokes because it was intimidating. That is so ridiculous. I think all women are beautiful. I uh, thank you. Absolutely. There's beauty in everything. I see beauty in everything. Oh my, you know what I think is really cool? That how people are now like women are wearing their hair shaved with yes. earrings because of that model, something rose. I don't know her name, but she did yeah. something. She brought in like shaved heads. And and I'm thinking, how come women's heads are nicer than men's? Because men's have like a pack of hot dogs on the back and stuff and lumps. Yes. But all oh, the women good. I've seen with shaved heads look super cool. Absolutely. Did you see Tiffany Haddish? I saw yesterday. Yeah. She, looked, she looks so beautiful. Have you seen her in person? I haven't seen it in person. Not in person. I saw her at an uh, interview. Luenel um, interviewed her and gorgeous. Be perfection. I, I've I got love to look it. that up. Lunell interviewed her? Yes, yes. It's on YouTube. I'll look it up. We oh, did definitely. Bad Girls of Comedy, all of us. Lunell, me, April oh, wow. Macy, Tiffany Haddish. How was that experience? Who, who Amazing. Snoop Dogg produced that, right? Yeah, it's Scott Montoya, but yeah. And, uh, and the beauty was it was exactly what you thought it was going to be. You know, Snoop showed up hours late. <laughs> hours in a puff yeah. of smoke and yeah. everybody was in a mood and the audience was they didn't care everybody was happy and we shot till i don't know 12 1 in the morning and then we took promo pictures like the whole thing was just surrealistically fun i yeah i love it yeah i i, I bet that he's like really fun to be around oh my god I, and tiffany kept teasing him like I didn't know, I didn't even know his real name was Calvin Broadus till I looked it up on Wikipedia. I thought it said Snoop Dogg on his birth certificate. I mean, I know it doesn't, but you get my point. Yeah. He just and Tiffany just kept going, Calvin. It was so <laughs> funny. It was just, it was a great night. I, I bet. And you, you that was was it the second comedy special that yeah, you? Yeah. First one was um. Well, that one aired first, even though they were shot. That one aired first, then. Uh, no, you're right. The first one was Latin Divas. Latin Divas of Comedy. I did my I, research. I totally forgot. Oh, my goodness. Rest in peace, Marilyn Martinez. Oh, I know. What a sweetheart. Oh, and funny. And like funny. Ridiculously uh, stupid funny. Yeah, I know. Ah. Yeah, yeah. We lost. You know what's really weird? I love telling this story. Scott Montoya was her manager. Oh, yeah, Scott at the time managed a few people, and and Marilyn was one of his clients. She used to open for Paul back in the day when he worked with Paul. And Marilyn, you know, look, we just said it. Everybody's beautiful. Marilyn was amazing. She was not particularly telegenic, and at that time there wasn't there weren't as many outlets as there are now. Mm -hmm. And the you know the networks and the cable networks were much more limited, and they were not getting behind anything that involved Marilyn. She just wasn't telegenic. She was filthy. I mean, her act was mm -hmm. so dirty, but she was amazing and hilarious. Yes. And, and I believe, and I've said this to Scott and it made his eyes well up. I believe he created Latin divas specifically as a vehicle for Marilyn to get I Marilyn where he believed she deserved to be. And nice. he worked for years to sell it. You know, we shot the original pilot for Latin Divas in 04. Then we shot the real Latin Divas in the holiday season of six. It was two years before we got the full green light. And then right. it aired in May of 07. We did the final publicity push in March of, of 07. Now follow me on this, okay? March of 07, because it was gonna air Cinco de Mayo of 07. Oh. Marilyn, Scott was pushing her and saying, Marilyn, you have to go to this thing and you have to promote it and blah, blah, blah. And Marilyn was like, I don't feel well, Scott. And Scott thought she was, you know, being lazy, whatever. But she went to something where she got filmed, went home. I hope I'm getting the details right. Collapsed on her way into her house, was taken to the hospital. And she actually got to see herself on TV for the first time on a major thing on her deathbed. Oh my God, that is so heartbreaking. But how wonderful that Scott 
he made it like under made- the wire, like right there, like photo finish. Wow. Talk about sticking the landing. Like she saw herself on Showtime. She closed the show. I was second to last. She did the last set. Of course. Bam. Lights out. How great is wow. I, mean, I believe in God. If you don't, I understand. But no, I do. I wonder- do. That, that how was- wonderful that that happened in that sequence and that she did not leave this earth without seeing herself in a in a in the right and appropriate place she should be. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's that's beautiful and heartbreaking at the same time. Yeah. So we did Divas first, then we did Snoop, then I did Not Skinny, Not Blonde. I love that. And by the way, here, see, um, we have a comment. All women are beautiful. Thank that's you. Right. So much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, yeah. So you did Not Skinny, Not Blonde. And I showed that on purpose because that's what it's supposed. Uh, you're beautiful if you're skinny and blonde. Which is and, and you know, so like stupid. I said, I don't have like common features. I have like a big face and, you know, I wasn't as a child and even as an, you know, like I've gotten comfortable with myself, mm-hmm. but for many, many years, not only did I not feel pretty or attractive, I felt quite the opposite that I kind of had to make up for it, that I had to like vamp like that, 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 like, look at me, I'm funny. I'll do your okay. homework. I'll mm-hmm. clean your house. You know, I'll do whatever you want to make you happy because I don't feel like, you know, fill in the blank. Yeah, you kind of feel, you know, we, we're made to feel like we need to compensate because we're not perfect. We're not right. skinny or blonde. And who says skinny is better? I don't, you know, it's just all uh, mind control, really. Like they put that in our heads. I love, not- I love now that I see young women that are curvy and, yes. they're, and they're wearing leggings and they're rocking their curves. And I'm like, yep. When I was young, everything was long before Spanx, like in the 70s and 80s. If you were going to the prom, you would be wearing like old school girdle with the panel in the oh front. You'd God. be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember so having to lay down the zip up. But in disco time, we would pull up our <laughs> zippers with alicates, like with pliers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You pull up your zipper on your Gloria Vanderbilt or Calvin Klein. You had one or the other or both if you were, you know, really, if you had a good job. And you would, and you would wear your tight jeans that were so tight, you would pull up the zipper with freaking, you know, pliers. That is, yeah, they have lied to us, you know, since we were born about what's beautiful and what's not beautiful. And it just, it pisses me off. It really does. But I'm so happy, like you said, to see young women just, you know, it's like, this is who I am. Yeah, I don't care what you think, and I love that. That is it's like that is, Lucy and Charlie Brown with the football. We just kept kicking the same football for fifty years, and then yeah. one day, you know, this generation, or maybe the one before, the millennials, the Gen Z, yeah. women under thirty-five now, they're like, you love it or leave it, and if you leave it, love I'm it. fine with that. I love it. Yep. If you don't like all this, bye, bitch. Yeah. 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 And and it's funny because like. You know, I'm curvy and I used to be very athletic. And sometimes when people like think I'm fat, I'm like, what, what is the limit of fat? Where does fat start? You know, it's like, what are I you don't saying? I get that. I, I ran my first half marathon at 164 pounds. Yeah, yeah. A half marathon. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, being an athlete is a whole different category, but it's like, you people are just cruel. I think they say things like that just to hurt people and to feel superior. And uh, But we've been mind controlled and we have to deprogram ourselves and help other people get deprogrammed. But for I real. think that's the role. I love seeing female comedians bring this to light and make it funny because when it's funny, it's palatable. It's like, oh yeah, you know? And even the reverse when I talk about men being simple because we've been fed a bunch of crap. What a, there's actually a whole book called the Cinderella Complex, and yeah. and one of the things that I do worry about this new generation is that they watch all of this like CW and you know Pretty Little Liars and and they think that all guys are like super hot and a Letterman sweater and romantic and sensitive and it's like no no men are the way they are they're simple creatures mm-hmm. and when i ask men are you offended for tw- i've been doing that bit for 15 years and i ask men are you offended that i say you're simple they're like no thank you for telling the truth you know okay. oh and yeah just because a guy doesn't show up and open the door and hand you a bouquet of flowers and take you to your favorite restaurant doesn't mean he's not a great guy 
A hundred percent. Their priorities are like, well, I take, you know, they want to take care of you in different ways. And it's not opening the door and giving you flowers. And the, those and ways are nice things too. But what I'm yeah. saying is I see that there's this whole personification of this fantasy because that's all people post on social media is that 0.01% of fantastic extraordinary. And then that becomes the norm because that's all you see. Yes, I, I agree. Yeah. Nobody's posting some guy in his chones, you know, with his gut hanging out, eating sauce right. and saying, this is my man. I'm so proud of him. Nobody's doing that. I know. That and is he, true. And the wife could genuinely love him. But for yes. whatever reason, she's not posting, you know, this is my guy who gets up every day and goes to work at a job he hates to provide for me. And take right. a picture of the guy going out the door. No, you take a picture of the hot guy in the nice car that took you to the happening restaurant, cool club, and, and young people are very susceptible to thinking that's real life and that's not sustainable. Absolutely. I love this. Uh, we have a lot of comments coming in. Um, that's don't right. Look, the heart. Don't look at a person, you know, like the exterior look at their heart. A hundred percent. Somebody with a beautiful heart is so attractive. It's yeah. the most attractive thing. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Rich. And then Jonathan asks, whose fault is that? Um, I guess about social media uh, portraying, portraying that. I don't know exactly what he's referring. If you can let us know, Jonathan, exactly. Okay, to know. The question. Yeah, we'll answer the question for sure. Um, so um, you grew up Latina. Did you grow up I here? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't grow up Latina. I'm still Latina. <laughs> oh, no. That is true. Good point. Good point. No, because I grew up in Argentina and then moved here. Did you grow up here? In oh yeah, I was born and raised in Miami. I mean, I know okay. I say in my act it's the capital of Cuba, but still yeah. technically it's America. But yeah, yeah, I was born in Miami, raised in Miami, stayed there till I was 30. Um, then I moved and went on the road and became a full time comedian and quit my day job. But I grew up in Miami, and mm -hmm. uh, and I loved it. And I moved to California in 1996. I moved here the first time, and uh, and I've been here pretty much except for a couple of TV and radio contracts since '96. Yes. And do you think like being Latina made it harder? Not just being a woman, but being a Latina woman in comedy made it harder for you, or I don't think it, it made it harder from the professional. Like I don't think bookers cared if I was Latina. Mm -hmm. I think that it's our own sort of inculcation of our background, our, you know, we're not raised to make a spectacle of ourselves or, you know, it's not part of the Latino culture for the woman. I mean, granted, you have wonderful Latina actresses, you mm -hmm. have wonderful Latina singers, you know, Celia Cruz, the list goes on and on. But actual comedians or comedic actresses when I was a little girl, all we had was Cantinflas and Alvarez Guedes. We didn't have like a Latina Carol Burnett or a Latina. We didn't have that. Yeah, that is true. I, I can say the same. Yes. Well, I grew up in Argentina, so we had, and actually in Argentina, there was not that many female comedic actresses. There was actresses. There was a couple of them, but yeah, um, you know, oh, oh, Rosie Perez. Okay. Rosie Perez. Yes. And look she's at the, young. Uh, she's young. She's she's in her forties now, maybe. That's younger than me. Like she's oh. new. Rosie Perez, Marissa Tomei's Italian, but I'm saying that these women are young. Like they're pretty new yeah. on the scene. I'm talking about when we grew up. I grew up in the seventies. There was nobody. You know what I mean? Like yeah, there was nobody true. to look at. Definitely. I and love how, even in the males, like I say, we had Cantinflas, who's international. Yes. And and in Miami, we had a Cuban named Alvarez Guedes, who's very famous in Miami and in New York. He's hilarious. I love it. You speak Spanish. Look up Alvarez Guedes, G-U-E-D-E-S. We used to play his records on Christmas Eve. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Some of them were a little blue, but they were hilarious. Nice. So here, Jonathan is saying, Monique, formerly a Latina, now she's just hilarious. Thank you. That is so sweet. I love hey, Jonathan. it. Jonathan. 
And then Monique, I thought you were in your thirties. Do you get it a lot, right? Like they think you're in your thirties. Because you don't look fifty-seven. I look. I men my own age want no part of me. They oh, want stop it! Why? Swear to you, nobody over forty-two has asked me out in fifteen years. What? I think because men my age. They've already had a family. They cycled through. They have grown children. Yeah. Some of them either want a second shot. <laughs> you know, let's have another family and see if we get this one better. Right. Or, or they, I, I can't even, you know, it's hard to describe, but the, the only people that ask me out are younger men because they're not intimidated by my success. They were raised with working mothers. Their mothers had jobs. Their mothers had college educations. Mm -hmm. Their mothers taught them how to cook for themselves and do their own laundry. So I'm super grateful that I, you know, that I, that I appeal to anybody. But the point is, is that at least there are some men, and I'm sure there's some in my bracket that understand, you know, hey, just because somebody has a job and they're very direct and they do mm -hmm. things a certain way, doesn't mean they're not loving, kind, compassionate, tender, sensitive. All of the above. Absolutely. Yeah. And you were married before. You were married like three, three times. times right? I'll never do it again. <laughs> Tell us why you'll never do it again. Because marriage to me is, it's a, it's a business to a degree in that you're going to build an empire together. You're going to buy a home. You're going to make investments. You're going to do things as a couple, as you should. So that's the business aspect. And then you have to dissolve the business if you separate and yeah. you're going to have children. And I still come from a place where being married is better for your children than not being married. No judgment. Mm -hmm. I think the majority of children now are born out of legal wedlock. Uh, to my knowledge, I think I read that statistic. And that being said, um, I'm not going to have children. That ship has sailed. Uh, mm -hmm. If I you know, want a baby, I could... My goal is to be famous enough that even though I'm old, they'll give me one. I figure if Elton John can have an old baby, if that old queen can have kids, somebody will give me one. But but I don't I don't feel anymore that I have to have a male partner. I have two brothers that could step in, and um, because I love children, and I haven't totally given up on that. But oh. I'm not going to have a biological child with a partner. That ship sailed. And to me, those are the two main reasons to get married. I basically yeah. became the man I want to marry. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, you have. I know. A lot of us have. It's almost like you're happy with yourself. And if somebody, if you allow somebody in your life at that level, they're going to have to make your life better. And you make their life better. If oh, not, it's what's your goal. point? And a commitment's a commitment. For the right. record, I'm, I am old school. I am monogamous. When mm -hmm. I'm with someone, I'm with them. I don't even date two people at once because I don't like mixing that energy. I don't like yeah. you're on a date with Tony on Friday and then you're on another date with Joe on Saturday. Yeah. How can you know which one you like better? That's just too much energy. Like Absolutely. I date one person until I see how it's going to go and then mm -hmm. it's done or it goes to the next level. But yeah. it's like a conveyor belt one at a time. I can't, yeah. you know, I don't like. I'm old school. I don't like yeah. ruffles. I don't like swinging. I don't like any of none of that is in my life. I'm not. Yeah, me neither. It's not sanitary. Not only that, but I tell people if you have to bring in a fly swatter, some you know, <laughs> a string of polo ponies and a mallet, like that, yeah. you're not doing it right. Like to me, if Thank I'm you. the right person, I just need a flat surface and a record player, and I'm good. It doesn't. I, yeah. That's it. I uh, preach. Yes. That's exactly what it is. I've always said this, that too. Like, oh, I need to watch porn with my partner. It's like, if you need to watch porn with your partner, then yeah, something is kidding? not clicking. I know. It's like, why would you do that? I have guy friends that do that. And they tell me like they do that with their wives. I'm like, uh, mm. then but you know, what's weird, the double standard. And I'm sorry if we're going off, you can fix. No, no, we are. This is a, a show about love and relationships also. But okay. like the green room edition. Yeah. Okay. So but what cool. I tell people, because it's the reverse, I have male friends who, because uh, I'm the chick that dudes talk to, that tell me, <laughs> yes. my, my wife doesn't even give me a chance to please her. Like once I'm done and she tries to, like, all right, hurry up, then she oh, like, gets wow. her, her toys out from the drawer 
men are very intimidated by sex toys. They, especially now, the new ones, my God, they have like antennas. Like you can launch a satellite with these things. <laughs> yeah, I know that. Eye. No, I have a friend who used to own a store in San Diego. So I've seen them because I actually literally picked up my friend to go to lunch and she owned F Street Books in San Diego, which is like a famous porn store because it's in the it's the only one that's still on the gas lamp district. Long story short, I um for the record, I, I that's another one of those things. Like, what do you need to be happy? Like what do you what do you need? So even from the woman's perspective, you know what the problem is? Women don't have the courage to speak up and tell a man, do this, don't do that. I like this. It would make me so happy if you that. Yep. They would rather just not deal with the man and have the toy than to get closer to the man by saying, hey, can we have an honest discussion about what makes me happy? Like that might have made somebody else happy, but it's not for me. I love that. Yes. And you know what, what happens? I don't know if this happens to you, but if I am very honest about it, some guys are intimidated by that. They're like, I never had a woman tell me that. Well, because nobody told you the truth before, you know, this, yeah. <laughs> it took, done that. yeah, I know. So a lot of, and it, it's like, they're, I think a lot of women, yeah, they don't speak up because from what I hear from my guy friends or guys I date, uh, they don't tell them what they really like, and then they're unhappy. And as women, we need to speak up and tell men what we need emotionally, sexually, at all levels, so they they know and understand. If you tell them, a lot of men, I'll, most of them are open that they want to know. Hundred percent. Yeah. They want to get laid. So if you're drawing them a roadmap, you know <laughs> this is the direct route to Hump Town. They're like, only. Oh, I'm and good. if you do this, you know, on a regular basis, I'm going to be happy and I'm going to be with you and I'm not going anywhere. 100%. It's like yeah. Paulo Coelho, the pilgrimage. Like this is the, this is the walk. <laughs> this is the walk to my puss right here. I'm giving you the walk. Totally. Yeah. It's, I, I, and it's, it's interesting because I, you know, I, I look back at my history and I, I made a lot of mistakes, but I didn't make the same mistakes. <laughs> I'm proud of that. Then you're very intelligent, mistakes. but you're very smart. Thank you. I try to at least switch it up and go, all right, you're going to make mistakes in life, but at least learn. Exactly. Yes. Learn. So, so um, what advice would you give people who want to get married, younger people who want to get married and, and have kids, you know, judging from your experiences and what happened in your marriages. What are like two or three things that you would tell this people? This is going to sound terrible. Oh. I don't care. <laughs> okay. I tell women, I say, pick the worst scenario that you can imagine with your guy, the worst. Okay. And I know this sounds terrible, but I tell them if you're already part, past the chemical part, meaning you like the way his body organically smells. You like the, the taste of his mouth. You like to kiss him in the morning. Like there is a bonding, a chemical animalistic mm -hmm. bonding. So yeah. take that bonding. Okay. And then add the layer. You love this man. All right. Now, if something God forbid should happen to him and he ended up in a wheelchair, would you take care of that man? Mm -hmm. Would you? I used to, I loved my second husband so much. I did. I really did. Oh. And I would tell him, just know, because he was very vain. I'd say, just know that if you were ever hit by a bus, I would blow dry your hair just the way you like it. Oh, that's the sweetest thing. But I meant it. Yeah, you know I really like. I meant it. And that's, to me, you know, I feel like if you don't feel that way about somebody, don't marry them. No. Because even when you feel that way, we still did not, we're... Dear friends, no harm, no foul. It's a long story for another day. And we yeah. we love each other. He's happily married with three children, all good in the hood. But the love upshot it. is, even with that, you may not end up together. But at least you started from the optimal, most perfect place of best intentions. I love it. Yes, absolutely. Do you keep in touch with your exes? Yes and no. Okay. Um, and here's the, the, that's the short answer. The long answer is I don't have any bad blood. I love them all. They love me. But when men move on and have a new woman in their life, a lot of times the new woman 
doesn't want me around. And I understand right. that and I'm yeah. down with it. But some, you know, they'll private message me happy birthday. They'll leave me a message. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like they do what they can. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. A lot of women are intimate. That's something I don't understand very well. Uh, women are intimidated of the old, you know, the ex, about the ex. And, and it's, it's your ex. Don't be intimidated. But, but you know, and, but men are too. And men are different because they're territorial. And a piece of advice yeah. that I give young women, if you don't have children with an ex, mm -hmm. don't have your ex around your current because men are territorial. A man never wants to be in the room with another man who has seen your nanny. End of story. I'm <laughs> that sorry. Is true. Yeah. In any way you want, but that's a true fact. He does not want to be in the same room with a man. You know, he doesn't. I'm so, I, I know that doesn't sound very evolved or very Cosmo, but I've Thank saved you. a couple of my girlfriends a lot of heartache mm -hmm. when they go like, oh, so-and-so's coming to my birthday party. No, he's not. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> But women are territorial too. Women are different. It's an emotional. Like I always jokingly tell men, never tell your wife that you gave another woman FaceTime. Because we're like, if you have a chick at the office and you like her and you went to lunch That's and she's true. cool and she's engaged or married or what, it's not about that. Mm -hmm. But if you say like, man, there's a new chick at work and I love talking to her, like your wife will automatically go on high alert. That is so true. You're right. I never thought about that. Yes. It's when they but talk to somebody else. It's attention because men yeah. don't give a lot of emotional attention. It's not their nature. That is true. So yeah, that's, that makes sense. Yeah. Cause I had an ex, you know, who was still texting me and the girlfriend was like, you need to like cut all ties with her. Yeah. And it kind of broke my heart, but I understand why, you know, yeah, because he doesn't have that much free time. It's not exactly. about, it's I tell this, is, I'll, I'll bring it down, Grace. This is what I tell young people that ask. I go, for a man, it's more important that you respect and admire him than love him. Love. Oh my God, so true. Love is conditional. Like, can you ask a woman, do you love your husband? She's like, well, you know, he's a pain in the ass. But yeah, I love him. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. love is conditional, unless you're God and you love people unconditionally. But it's very oh hard for humans to love each other unconditionally. Yeah. However, admiration and respect are of a piece. You're in or you're out. I always ask women when they tell me they have marital problems, I go, do you respect your husband? And they go, and there's a pause. And I go, you're going to have problems. Wow. Because you either, if you respect the man, that is spiritual Viagra. Absolutely. And you know, I've broken up with a couple of my exes because I had lost respect. And exactly. And I was like, I can't do this because then you're, it's not fair to them. No. To be able to, no yeah. If you lose respect, if you don't, yeah. when that, that song, you've lost that loving feeling. I don't know that it's the loving feeling so much as I admire you. I look up to you. You're my yeah. man. I respect you. And I tell them that men, that for women, it's more important that you prefer them than right. love them. Like you love them, sure. But if every chance you get, you run off with the guys or you're on a golf trip or you're all about bro life, it doesn't matter how many times you tell her you love her. You don't prefer her company. And eventually That's she's going to feel that and it's going to hurt her. That is so true. We want it's their time. Preference. And their we want to be preferred. Preferred. I love it. Well, time and attention, I guess. But preferred yeah. is a higher level. It's almost like, yeah, I'm your number you're one. You're my go-to. Like, yeah. If I have free time, my go-to is to spend it with you. Yeah, that makes you definitely feel special. Yeah. If it, yeah. If they start hanging out with different people, it's like, uh, yeah, he's not that into me. Yeah. Yeah. No, I definitely. had a guy that used to tell me every day that he adored me. But every weekend I was like total football widow, all about um, the bro life. It would start at happy hour on Friday. So I'm like, oh, so Monday through Thursday night, it's all about me. But Friday night through Sunday evening, you know, you're yeah. more than Lindbergh's baby. Yeah, not cool. Definitely no. not cool at all. Um, here, Rich is saying, uh, take it slow, get to know that person, don't rush into it, and at the end, it will pay off. He's correct. Yes. And I got to tell you, a little something that I like about COVID, it's pumped the brakes on hookup culture. Totally. I know. People are getting to know each other. People are mm -hmm. texting, messaging, calling, FaceTiming. 
I have two nieces, 16 and 18, almost 19. Yeah. I did not like seeing the direction that their little lives were going mm -hmm. because of social media and hookup culture. Like yeah. I, I spy on them. I have fake social media accounts. So oh I, my God. They think I'm a light, I'm serious. They think I'm a light skinned brother with blue eyes from Oakland. I, I can't. can't. <laughs> I spy on them. But it's because I want to know that, you know, that my 18 year old niece mm -hmm. isn't just hooking up and doling out hand jams in the P-Lot. I know, right? It's a different world. They don't even have the base system. We had first base, second base, third base. Oh. We had making out, feeling up the boobs over the shirt, under the shirt, waist down. Like we had a whole, you know, oh, we had a yeah. A step. It was a whole system, like a menu. Yeah, we didn't go straight yeah. to like bam, home base. You know. No. So I, that I feel like COVID pumped the brakes on hookup culture and is yeah. giving people an opportunity to go back to a time when you genuinely got to know somebody. Well, that's the problem that I encounter guys at any age. Uh, nowadays, I think with uh, the online dating, all the uh, Tinder and all the apps, I, I think- No, I've never done a single one of those. Don't do them. I don't even know what they look like. <laughs> oh, they're awful. Uh, great for comedy material, but that's about it. Okay. And, they just want because I don't know if other women are sleeping with them too quickly. I don't know what the deal I'm is. Sure. Yeah, and it's like I don't even know you. What are you talking about? You know? Okay. True story from two years ago, three years ago. Okay, ready? Yeah. Okay. Two and a half years ago, hard to believe. I was coming. I, I live in a nice building. I'm coming out of my building. There's a guy in a very nice car who waves me down, coming out of the garage, and I said. Can I help you? And he goes, um, believe it or not, I'm always the guy that helps other people. My friend left, so I left his apartment. I need a jump. I'm like, great, fine. So I jumped his car because as a road comic, a lot of people help me. And he's like, oh my God, you're the best. Thank you. Attractive guy, smart guy, nice car. Nice. I know the apartment he was coming out of. Good guy. So he says to me, he's driving away. And he says to me, hey, I know this is weird, and the way we met, but can I have your phone number? I was like, sure, you're nice, you know. So yeah. I gave him my number. That's how I feel like you should meet people organically, at the yoga, you know, wherever. So yeah. very nice guy. So two days later, he texts me, he goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm in downtown. I was at the Central Market. I go, I'm getting a bite to eat. He goes, what are you doing in 45 minutes? I'm like, I'll still be here eating lunch. Why? He goes, oh, because I had a little time today and I thought we could get together. And I totally knew what that meant, you know? And I said, like, I don't know who you think you're texting, but I'm a grown ass woman that doesn't get together with people on a rando Sunday. And the yep. guy like totally backed up and then he was nice. And, you know, we, we went on one date and we agreed that we were not good for that. And we're still friends. And oh, I that's great. He, and I think he respected that right. I set up the proper boundaries that it wasn't going to get awkward or stupid or we weren't yeah. going to be, you know, like I totally said, like, you're the coolest guy. I like you a lot, but I'm not interested in that way. Right. But no harm, no foul. And it can happen. You know, a lot of times I have a lot of guy friends because of, I've you know. i people up that liked me with a friend of mine and they're still dating. Oh, really? Yeah. So you're a good matchmaker. I'm a great matchmaker. Oh my God, maybe you should like do that. Well, because everything is energy. And when you mm -hmm. feel someone's vibration, yeah. then you're like, oh, this person vibrates here. And this person, like, I think they would be good for each other. I love that. Yes, it I is. I matched up three energy. couples. One got married. One has been on, I introduced them last fall. They went on a trip together ended up in lockdown, decided to isolate together. They've been together almost a year, eight months of it in the same house. And they're like, wonderful. Oh, that's- And then uh, the other good. couple, they've been seeing each other on again, off again, but mm -hmm. they're pretty exclusive. They both travel for business and because of COVID, but they're, they're almost in a couple of weeks, it'll be two years. Wow, you're really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know it. Cause it's vibration. Yeah, it is. And it you really know what is. the problem is? People aren't honest. When they match people up, if the guy goes, oh, is your friend really pretty? I'll be like, no, she's very attractive. 
Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's fit. Like, I'm not going to snow you. What's the point? You're going to see the product and you're going to know I lied. Right. On on both sides. So I always tell my, I'm very honest when I'm selling the car. I'm like, let me, I'm going to tell you first what's wrong with her. Okay. She's oh, no. Are you yeah. serious? You first tell them what's wrong with the person. I go, she's a little bit like high mileage, like a car. I go, she's a little bit needy, right? <laughs> she's a little bit needy. Right. And she's had some bad relationships. I've already told her not to go into it with you. So don't worry. I've already, you know, I like, cleaned the car for you. But, um, you know, it might take a minute because et cetera, et cetera. And the guy was like, thank you for that. And you know what? When you undersell and over deliver, the people are happy. Then he's like, oh my God, she's totally not needy and she's beautiful. Another satisfied customer. (laughs) That's great. I didn't. Most people do the opposite because it's their friend. They're like, oh, she's beautiful. She's amazing. She's like, no, she's my friend. I know she's a pain in the ass. (laughs) But I love her. And I think you will too. I love it. That's an honest. So you're all about honesty and being real, like all so day long. real all day long. There's and not you one wake me up in the middle of the night and ask me a question. You're going to get the same answer. <laughs> That's great. Do you think that uh, most comics are like that? We are. Um, it truthful? depends. To be honest, it depends on substances. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think some people in our business, because it's the business that it is, there's a lot of drugs and alcohol. Yeah, and I agree. Drugs and alcohol, by definition, are what I call the big lie. Because once yeah. you add shame to the picture, once you add subterfuge, then everything's going to be colored with that lens. True. Yes, absolutely. I just had an experience. Like I've never somebody. met anybody who just comes right out and said, look, I'm crazy about you, but you need to know. When you're not looking, I love the heroin. Just love it. Can't get enough. <laughs> That's right. You're going you're <laughs> to figure it out for yourself. And yeah, no, I have a bit in my act where I say, I don't even care if a guy's a cross dresser, I'll hide the good stuff so you don't stretch it. Like, nobody takes me at my va- at my word. But the truth is, I would rather have somebody tell me, by the way, I drink a lot. Sometimes I have ED, but I'm a good man. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. it's a problem. I'm not even going to tell you I'm working on it because I'm a little overwhelmed by it. I would go on a date with that guy faster. Thank you. Then a guy that snows me, and then I find out what you have a wife, or you have you know, a wife. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, I'm still like uh, I'm getting divorced, and I'm living with my ex in a room. I-, I had that happen. I was like, "You're still married?" Yeah. Yeah. No, they they just like twist reality. So you is all like, this you're time. done. You know, it's like I'm not mm, a high IQ. Not that uh, you're married. Just yeah. stop it. Yeah. Uh, so. What do you want to be known for? This is like a deep question. Oh, my. Uh, If on my tombstone, people wrote, she was able to love hard, forgive harder, and got as happy as she could, as fast as she could. That's it. I mean, I live by that. I close every show with that. I love it. That's what I live by. I try with all of my might not to hold on to anything. And by the way, (laughs) when I say forgive harder, I don't even necessarily mean other people. When you go to bed at night, forgive whatever screw ups you did that day. Absolutely. Go, surrender them. All right. So you didn't finish. You didn't meet that deadline. You didn't finish that bio or that article or, you know, you'll do better tomorrow. Absolutely. It's very important to forgive yourself. Number one. Yeah. Because so, we're so hard on ourselves a lot of times. Harder yeah. than we are on other people for sure. Yeah. So that's that. What I say, I, I, I've been saying that for, that's been my standard close for almost 20 years. I love it. And that's what I love about your standup. It's not only hilarious, but you do have a message. So how, did you always have a message or did you one day decide, you know, no, when I do- No, I was the kid that when I was a little kid, like a little kid, I would say things to people that they'd look at my parents and go, wow, that's quite an imagination on that child. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, well, I remember I come from a very Catholic family. Mm, yeah. And in Miami, there's a there's a bridge that leads to a place called Key Biscayne. Anyway, there's these islands joined by a bridge, right? Yeah. And I remember hearing the old ladies in my family gossiping about this one, you know, was a hippie and this one had gotten into Harry Krishna. You know, I mean, it was the 70s. 
Yeah. And I looked at my mother and I was a kid and I said, mommy, I believe that God is like that. We were at the beach. I said, God is that shore over there. Okay. He's the other <laughs> island. I said, and we're here. And to get to him, there's space. There's that water. I don't think he cares if you do the breaststroke or you do the, you know, you go on your back. I said, as long as you're moving through the water towards that land, I don't think he cares. That I love that. That is that's a swimmer, competitive swimmer. I appreciate that. Yeah, and my mother was me like, where does that come from? I didn't raise you that way. Yeah. That's that you you're like a like very wise person, like naturally wise. Thank you. And you probably were like you obviously were like that since you were oh, little. Oh no, when I was a little kid, I used to say things that like I say, grown ups would just look at me. Yeah. Like, what just happened? <laughs> yeah, because I, you know what it was? I have some weird machine in me, and we all have our own personal genius. Definitely. I yeah. sense truth. Oh, and I like when I, hear, when I hear hypocrisy, mm -hmm. when I hear fear, and people yeah. put a pretty dress on fear because it makes them feel better about being afraid, you know, when I, because that's all that not embrace, that's racism, that's, being you know homophobic like mm -hmm. every negative emotion you feel towards another human being any judgment you feel towards another human comes from fear there's no Absolutely. reason to ever have a negative emotion towards another human being even if they're doing something stupid to you okay mm -hmm. and i you know i've had that i've been married to people that were unkind yeah but in my head i was thinking if, is your side of the street clean, Monique? Did you do something to provoke this? Did you? I love that. And if I told myself the truth and go, yeah, I took a cheap shot. I mean, yeah. I don't do that now, but when I was younger, look, I'm human. Yeah, I did that. I took a cheap Absolutely. shot. Absolutely. Yeah. I own that. I know. You know? And, and the main thing I think is rather than judging, is to have compassion on others. Uh, that's what 100%, I'm practicing. But it's always yeah. about owning what you might have done. Absolutely. And then, and then once you know you didn't do anything, yeah. Once you know, then you say whatever is challenging them and making them be this way, yeah. you know, God bless them. I wouldn't I wouldn't want to live like that. I wouldn't wouldn't want to be on the defensive. I wouldn't want to be I wouldn't want to be angry. That's when the compassion kicks in, I think. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. It's it's so much better, but it takes years, you know, to get to this point, right? Well, and, until you see what I call deposits in the faith bank, like once you do it once and you see how well it works, then it's like a magic trick. I remember my ex-husband, yes. my third ex-husband, which is the end of the <laughs> that's it three strikes. That's the end. Yes, I remember one day he was upset with me and kind of yelling, and I was just calm. And the calmer I got, the more upset he got. And he says, "Do you have anything to say?" And I said, it must be so boring. He goes, what? I go, always having one emotion. Like, you're always mad at me. Like, doesn't that get old? Like, can't you think of a new way to feel? Like, like it must be boring to just be mad at me. <laughs> yeah, like I want no doctor. Yeah. <laughs> what's the point? If I'm so upsetting to you, like, you're not going to change me. That's not an option. Exactly. And I think that's the first time that really occurred to him when I said it out loud like this is it I'm a fully formed human you're you know and and this is grace this is my mantra lately because during COVID people are losing their minds <laughs> thank you y'all completely and I tell people you have two options get mm -hmm. good or mm -hmm. get gone absolutely I you agree do not have the option to change the way other people think and feel you can barely do it with a baby you really can't do it with an adult Absolutely. If you have a friend and they don't feel the way you do about politics or religion or BLM or whatever it is, make peace with it and say, you know what? I love you enough that I'm going to make peace with this. I love it. Or get gone. Get good or get gone. I love it. I love it. Well said. Thank you for saying that because, yes, people are losing their minds and everybody's attacking everybody. And it's like, what is going on? And, and yeah. you just said it beautifully. Uh, I'm practicing compassion and understanding. And I also, you know, we need to understand different narratives. People have different narratives, you know, and, and everyone. everyone, you know, no in general. Story. And, 
yeah, we don't. And so I have friends that support, you know, the left, the right, the middle. I mean, and, and I actually want to listen to what they have to say so I understand where they're coming from and their narrative. That doesn't mean that I'm going to convert to their side, but you, we got to listen to each other and understand where we're coming from. And if we don't agree, it's okay. <laughs> it's totally the American yeah. way. Yeah. I, I thought that's, that's what this was all about. I moved here from Argentina because it was about, you know, accepting other people the way they are, but now it's just cuckoo. Yeah. It's, it's a little cuckoo crazy. Yeah. And I, at this point, you know, we're, seven weeks and a few days away from the election. And, uh, I know. And you know what? It, it, I have so many friends that at this point are saying, I don't even care anymore. I just want it over. And uh, yes, I understand. It's just, well, it's too much. A lot. It's a lot. Yeah. It's, we're not going to get into it, but it's no, a lot. No, but that's my point is that, yeah. you know, I tell people, you have people in your life that were here before these two candidates. Right. They were your cousin for 40 years before this year. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. People are disowning people, friends and family members because oh. of this. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is insanity. Yeah. It's like a dictatorship. Like we have become the dictators too. Yeah, no, I tell people, I say, do you, is this the hill you want to die on? This is what you want to lose a 40 year friendship over? Really? This is the one, this is the issue. This is the election. This is the discussion. Really? Crazy. Yeah. I'm the total peacemaker in my family. Like yeah, I had two people in my family that weren't even speaking to each other. They wow. called each other a bunch of dirty things on Facebook. And I, I called one and pretended that I didn't know anything. Yeah. You know, and I'm not usually one for trickery, but it was necessary. <laughs> That's and, funny. and she's like, did you hear about? I'm like, no, what happened? And then she told me, I go, well, that's unfortunate because, you know, so-and-so really loves you. I'm sure that they're very hurt by this. And they were like, well, you wouldn't know from the response. And I'm like, people dig in, they get stubborn. Da, 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 da. She's like, yeah, I know. And you know what? I, I probably overreacted and by playing stupid, I got her to kind of unravel a little bit. And, and mm -hmm. before I knew it, they're peas and carrots again. Good for you. That's great. You're a peacemaker. Yeah. The other relative called me and said, what the heck did you say to so-and-so? I said, nothing. I didn't say anything. And I yeah. really did not I just quietly let her unravel her discomfort and upset. Yeah. And I think it's, uh, we're taking it out on each other Yeah, uh, because we're upset about what's going on which is extremely upsetting and yeah. confusing and uh it's just heartbreaking uh and and we're taking instead of uniting and helping each other we're like attacking each other and that's that's very sad i agree so well we've been talking for an hour and i have a couple more questions for you right. um ready. what are you grateful for everything like every single thing I don't take a single thing for granted. Beautiful. I love that. Do you have any favorite words? Um, you know, it's funny you should say that. I have many favorite words. I love words. But lately, because of COVID, I've been thinking of Rumi, the poet Rumi. He's a 12th century uh, Sufi mystic. And there's a Leonard Cohen song where he talks about, he kind of paraphrases Rumi, but Rumi says, look to the bandaged place that's where the light comes in and what he's basically saying is is that your wounds your challenges like if you were perfect there'd be no place for the light to come in Ooh, i got chills wow and in leonard in a leonard cohen song he says everybody has a crack and the crack is where the light comes. but it's a paraphrase but but yeah. what he's basically saying is if you didn't have that vulnerability that breach that place then you wouldn't know what you're made of or what you're capable of. So mm -hmm. in this time of COVID, where we're all being challenged. I think of Rumi, look to the bandaged place. That's where the light comes in. I love it. This is actually for us an opportunity to heal a lot of wounds because we're, first of all, we're by ourselves most of the time. 
um, you know, not interacting the way we were before. So we have more time to be, uh, you know, to, to, to go introspective. In, uh, introspect that's the word. Thank you. <laughs> I was thinking, it, word. It, but I couldn't get it out in English. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're with ourselves. I mean, I found that, uh, I grew so much because I live alone. I have not been in touch with a lot of people and I could have used it for, you know, to, to get angry and to, to just destroy everything around me. But, you know, it's a choice. We have a choice. And so choose uh, building yourself up, uh, going inside and, and getting to be a better person. I think that's what, what we all need to do. And this would be a better world and a better uh, society. I think if we all did that, I know so many people that have really seen the silver lining and have done mm -hmm. a lot of amazing, they've developed side hustles that have now become their front hustle. Yes. I've seen a lot of great things happen at, at, under this, under the blanket of COVID. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Same here. Um, so where can we follow you? I know you have a, a new show right on Saturdays. Yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, Monique Marvez and I do a live stream every Saturday night called Talk of Our Times because I don't take myself serious. So the acronym is TOOT. And uh, <laughs> so, um, we Great. have Talk of Our Times. And then I right now I'm building a giant, you know, Joe Rogan esque website, MoniqueMarvez.com. So that, and you can go there now and give me your email address because everything will be there YouTube, Facebook, blah, 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 blah. It's, it'll basically be the store of Monique, MoniqueMarvez.com. I love it. Great. Well, follow her on uh, Instagram. Do you have Instagram? At Monique, it's all at, I'm the only oh, Monique, Monique Marvez. Marvez. At Monique Marvez on everything. Excellent. Thank you so much for being on the show. You're so amazing. I love you so much. It's mutual, Grace. And when this is all over, we're going to go out for a real coffee. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. I would love that. There's some good Argentinian restaurants in my neighborhood in Hollywood. Oh, my God. Yes. Steak. Are you a steak person? Not us. No, but I'm good with the sides. <laughs> You're good with the, I'm a steak person. So, I know, yeah, vegans and vegetarians are going to hate on me. But, you know, no, I grew up in Argentina. No, no, no. I tell so. people, don't be a vegetarianist. <laughs> right. Exactly. Listen, I can't. I grew up to eating. each his own. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. So, yeah, uh, thank you again for being on the show. And thank you, everyone, for commenting. Your comments are great. Um, and I will see you next Sunday at 7 p.m. Thank you. I'll watch whoever's on next week. Awesome. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you.